It feels fancy to have a safe deposit box. It is. Like, like I'm know. going to my box. Right. Like, like on like, movies when they're like, I have to come in to check my vault to yeah. get my diamonds or something. And when I was on the teller line, I used to even feel fancy when somebody mm-hmm. came and was like, oh, I need to get my into my box. I'm like, oh, I can help you with yeah. that. Put on my special <laughs> gloves or something. Yeah. <laughs> come this way. Yeah. So what were the rest of us need these for, Crystal? <laughs> What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse-bouge. Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 48 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and today we're talking about Meraki Greek Grill. Next, we'll discuss benefits of having a safe deposit box. And finally, we'll share some of the daily habits of happiness experts. So each week on The Perfect Bite, we visit a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope will become your new favorite. And this week, I'm sharing a place I went to for the first time, but it's already a place I'm going to go back to, Meraki Greek Grill. And I discovered after I went that several of my friends recommended it, and I even ran into our chief lending officer when I was there. And he was featured in episode 10, if you want to go back and hear about how he teaches his kids to be independent with their own finances. So... Anyway, we went to the Centennial Center location, but they have five locations around the valley with another one coming soon near St. Rose and Spencer. So chances are there is one near you. I did want to note they are closed on Mondays. I would hate for anyone to go and be disappointed when they Mm -hmm. try to show up on a Monday. So when I was looking at the website, their press section had a bunch of articles where local chefs shared their favorite places to eat in Las Vegas on Eater Las Vegas website. And so many of them listed Meraki as a place they love. Oh. Yes. So I was like, okay. They're like, yeah, I've seen a billboard Mm -hmm. gotta check it out plus they have five stars on yelp which you know we check that before we visit any of these locations so uh, a few pro tips in ordering of course i do not speak greek and i'm not an expert on this but i like to know how to pronounce things when i order so when i got there i asked at the front how to pronounce the name of the restaurant and they said it's meraki with the accent on the a and when i asked the server he was like whatever just pronounce it everyone mispronounces everything here he said people are still ordering a gyros or gyros you know and it's like okay euro people like just <laughs> when you go there if you're gonna order it's a euro sound like you know what you're doing so there's your pro tip for the day but I went with my husband for a date night and so we did splurge a little bit and I asked what they recommended at the front so you order up front and then you go sit down and wait for your meal and they suggested the signature bowl so I chose that you can have Greek rice, which is a lemon rice or quinoa. And I chose the rice and then I added the gyro meat. Ton of fresh veggies all chopped up. Tomatoes, red onion, feta, kalamata olives, garbanzo beans. So it's all just a nice kind of like almost like a chopped salad on top of the, the bed of rice. And it's not like a ton of rice. Mm, Sometimes when I get it, I'm really like, good. there's not enough toppings, but it was a really good balance. It was delicious. And then my husband got a chicken soup with rice and lemon that was amazing. And I'm going to butcher this pronunciation. I should have asked, but... Avgalamano. Doesn't Hmm. that sound authentic, guys? I don't know if I said that right. But that is this really creamy, delicious lemon soup that I would definitely get again. And then he also got the grilled steak kebabs that came with Greek fries as well. And they actually asked you how you wanted your steak kebabs cooked, which other Greek places kind of quick serve. They've never asked that before. So that was kind of nice. And then we also added a dessert called Ravani. It's a semolina cake with fresh citrus and a syrup on top. And it kind of reminded me of, if you get baklava, uh-huh. the Greek dessert, there's kind of like a, a honey syrup that goes on top of it. Yeah. It kind of seeps into all the all the little layers. It's like that. And so it's, it's kind of an interesting texture. It's a coarse milled wheat. So it has sort of like a, not a crunch, but definitely a more hearty texture when you have it. So I'm... I'm kind of butchering the, the description part. here, but yeah, the cake. Okay. So, but it was, it was really good. I liked it. I would order it again. So for all of that, it was about $45. You get a basic Greek bowl for 12 and then you add the meat on top of that cost. So you could have had chicken or steak or the Euro meat, whatever you chose. So it was really good. It I would sounds totally really go delicious. Back. Yes. Yeah. Let's go after we record today. Let's do it. (laughs) I think next time I would order the chicken skewers or maybe just get that traditional gyro because that's still a go-to favorite of mine. If you have a recommendation for a restaurant or dish for us to try, please send us a message at The Perfect Bite 
at ccculb.com. We are always open to your suggestions. Up next, we'll talk about whether a safe deposit box is right for you. A safe deposit box can help you protect important documents, sentimental objects, and valuables from fire and theft. But whether or not you need a safe deposit box comes down to your personal situation. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how the boxes work, what documents you can store, and what items you shouldn't. It feels fancy to have a safe deposit box. It is. Like, like I'm know. going to my box. Right. Like, like on movies when they're like, I have to come in to check my vault to yeah. get my diamonds or something <laughs> when i was on the teller line it, it used to i used to even feel fancy when somebody came and was like oh, i need to get my mind to my box i'm like oh i can help you with yeah. that <laughs> put on my special gloves or something yeah. <laughs> come this way yeah so what were the rest of us need these for crystal <laughs> Well, first, let me share how a okay. safe deposit box works. And so it's either called a safe deposit box or a safety deposit box. They're typically long metal boxes that are locked in a vault or at your bank or your local credit union. The boxes, they come in different sizes. Generally, they're either a three by five or a 10 by 10. The depth, I would estimate, is about like maybe 18 inches. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty long. And you've already... So yeah. I don't have it. You I've don't. Never had no, <laughs> I've never either, but I've definitely opened a lot in, mm -hmm. in my history at the credit union. So some of the things that people typically store in their boxes are like birth certificates, death certificates, marriage certificates, those important documents mm -hmm. that you might need to have the originals for, real estate deeds, car titles, if you've got stocks or bonds, things like that, family heirlooms, photos even, mm -hmm. or other important legal documents. Some of the things that you are always advised not to, and we, we will advise you as well not to store, things like cash. Cash does not go in your box. Weapons mm. and liquids. Kind of like going on a flight. Don't. Yeah, no liquids. <laughs> no liquids. Don't, mm. don't store those yeah. in there. But basically, boxes can range anywhere between $20 to $200 annually. It really just depends on the size and also the location of your box, whether it's at a bank, a credit union, or some other kind of fiduciary location. Things to consider before you get your box are, I guess, what do you want to store? Are you storing certificates and documents like paper items that are pretty small? You don't really need like a big box. Or are you storing family heirlooms? Maybe you need a larger box. So that will help you determine the size that you need for your box. Also, you want to decide who can have access to the box. Is it going to be just you? Is there going to be a co-renter like a spouse or a child? Things to keep in mind is if it is just under your name, if something were to happen to you, what's going to go on with the box? Who's going to have access? Make sure you let somebody know that if, if you do get a box. What you want to do if you do want to get one is also make sure you make an appointment with your institution. Sometimes this can only be done with certain employees. So you want to find out, you know, what's the best date and time to come in. Also, what documents that you need to actually sign to get your box going. Yeah. So actually at Clark County Credit Union, I just heard this, that come directly to the branch because if you phone in, we don't have a lot of boxes available, so you might... First come, first serve. Exactly. So they're not going to tell you over the phone that it's available. You actually need to come in and make like talk to somebody, so... Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, and they're, they're a hot item. There's not... I think that they're not as popular as they used to be. Mm -hmm. So if you find one, that's why it's like kind of harder. Like you just need to, to get it. There are some benefits of having a safe deposit box. It can be safer than having a home storage. You also, you know where all your things are. I don't know about you, Shannon, but sometimes I'm like, I'm going to put this away in a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I don't lose it. And then it's I like, never do that. where's yes. that safe space at? <laughs> I can buy my wedding rings for like a year after oh my having gosh. a baby because I put them in the safe spot. <laughs> I'm totally guilty of that. So safe. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Also, it just keeps your personal items protected. So if you do have those family heirlooms, maybe, you know, you live in tornado area. I don't know what mm -hmm. the circumstance might be, but it might be better to have like a safe deposit box um, for those items. There are some risks of using a safe deposit box. One of the things I kind of mentioned before is access is limited. If the, the credit union or the bank is only open during a certain time, those are the only times that you will actually have access to your box. You can't get it at two in the morning because the location is mm -hmm. not open. Also, you can lose the items if you don't pay the rent. It's got those annual fees. If you miss out on the rent, you got it. That's another reason why it's important to read that contract. You know, what happens with your belongings if you miss out on the rent? Is there a grace period for paying rent? Is there late fees? Things like that. Also, survivors may face delays. So if you were to pass away, 
and the box is only accessible by you, your family members may not be able to get those items in the box right away. And then another risk is that boxes aren't also are always disaster proof. So I mentioned tornadoes or a hurricane example. It's not a guarantee that it will withstand something like that. So just things to keep in mind depending on where you live and what uh, you want to put into the box. Some alternatives to a safe deposit box. So if you don't want to go to the credit union or the bank and have a box, you might want to look into installing a firewall or water wall or, or burglar proof home safe at home. Really ramp up your security is another option. I know there's like so many different like smart home mm-hmm. options. So, you know, check out that. And then also for documents, another way to do it is store your documents online. It doesn't replace the originals where you might need it, but if you were to lose the re- originals, it makes it easier if you have a copy to actually get replacements of those. So that's a good alternative. But overall, organizing critical documents is vital to managing your finances and a safe deposit box can help. But before renting one, just make sure that you read the agreement carefully. Don't entrust your valuables to a safe deposit box unless you understand its limitations and always make sure that your family members know how to access the box if you are not available. I'll be getting one for my diamond collection. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to get one for my rubies. (laughs) Well, let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. Clark County Credit Union members have received more than $73 million in bonus dividends since 2001 just for using the credit union services they need every day. Since CCCU is owned by our account holders, they earn the dividend, not shareholders. This year, we returned a $2.6 million bonus dividend to members with auto loans, credit cards, and checking accounts. Open an account today and start earning your own bonus dividend. Funds privately insured by American Share Insurance. So next up is our future self segment inspired by the happiness project. So Crystal, do you agree that happiness isn't just smiling all the time? Oh yeah. Right. People smile all the time and are not happy. Right. It's a little deeper than that. Right. So if there's anyone who can provide us with answers and tips to cope with our bad days and be happier, it's experts who have dedicated their careers to studying it. And so there was a really great article from MSN where actually time surveyed 18 leading experts about their daily habits and how it affects their lives. Most of these happiness experts emphasize the same things, a sense of control and autonomy over one's life, being guided by meaning and purpose, and connecting with others. And they also agree that happiness can be measured, strengthened, and taught. So it's not just something that you're always inherently happy and you can't learn how to become happier, which I I thought was cool. So their question was, is happiness a choice? When asked, experts have landed in the middle, saying there are countless variables influencing your mood. One co-founder of the Happiness Studies Academy said, part of it is a choice, part of it is innate. And that choice means to work hard at choosing to be happy. I think that's totally true. Like we can look at different situations, like kind of in a previous episode, we talked about reframing. I can choose how to look at this Mm -hmm. and make it mean something, or I can make it mean a completely different thing. Exactly. You have that power. Exactly. You can choose how to think about it. The next was, can happiness be bought? Experts were divided on this question. Our favorite, Gretchen Rubin, author of The Happiness Project, she said, money can't buy happiness, but it can buy things that contribute mightily. Spending money on other things like exciting experiences is also linked to happiness. So I was trying to think about that, like, how can something that I purchase contribute to my happiness? What do you think? I think it can, and it, you know, and it can be even like small ways, starting with not having as much money. I just like grocery shopping is a good example, you know, being able to just have like snacks available for my kids. That's brings me happiness, brings them happiness. We're all happy because we have snacks, you know, versus us only being able to afford breakfast, lunch, dinner, Mm -hmm. no snacks in between things like that. So I I, I do, I can see, you know, money, money will allow you to get a little bit more things. This is so silly, but like, I feel happiness when I open my kitchen drawer and it has Ziploc bags in different yeah. sizes. <laughs> oh yeah, that is. I'm like, I've made it. I have all these Ziploc bags. No offense to my mom, but she was, she would never buy Ziploc bags. Same. Have the same my dad little... was like, no. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm rich in Ziploc bags. <laughs> I feel so happy. But it just feels like a, I can have these things, these little luxuries mm-hmm. that just give me like a little, like, I don't know. Like even like the... um, streaming devices, like having the different streaming, like, oh, I've got Disney Plus and I've got Hulu. Like I feel good. Like that I can afford well, and those provide experiences these like you can have that family movie night that, you know, we've talked about yeah. before, like getting people together. And so yeah, it doesn't have to be anything like huge. I'm not going to go 
you know, there's that saying like, can money buy happiness? It's like, well, I've never seen anyone sat on a jet ski before. <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's like, well, I don't need a jet ski. I'm happy with my yeah. Ziploc bags. And so, yeah, there are things that can link spending that money to building happiness. So the next was acknowledging negative emotions rather than suppressing them. I thought this was interesting, especially given our recent conversations. But if you just dodge that resentment, fear, or anger, it can also uh, lead to unhappiness down the road. And there was a professor from Northwestern University, and she said that the most people assume happiness is about ignoring the difficulties of life, sort of that like Pollyanna, like everything's great, I don't have to think about anything negatively, but instead we should learn to accept and act upon the challenging situation appropriately. They also talked about what works to help us be more happy. They have uh, the top two were spending time with families outside of the house and with friends in a non-professional environment at least once a week. Oh. Social relationships are the chief building blocks of happiness. And so I was thinking about that too. Like, how do we kind of just get that general sense of community and personal relationships? We just came out of this pandemic. Like, I think we all kind of had to relearn how to do this, oh, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. We were home for so long. And just focusing on how to build those relationships, especially if you do still work remotely or on a hybrid schedule, that could really help increase your happiness. Many other habits were linked to increasing happy hormones and contributing to a healthy mental well-being. Some of these things we talked about before, pursuing hobbies, cooking, art, music, reading, exercising, or playing sports, getting at least seven hours of sleep at night. That's a big one. Basking in nature. So I know, Crystal, we talked in a previous episode about you getting up in the morning. Yeah. Being that outside. That contributes to my happiness. Mm-hmm. I just feel calm, at peace, and just like ready. And when you don't do it? I'm just like dragging. Yeah. I'm dragging. Isn't yeah. That interesting. When things get rough, there's some other coping strategies. Gretchen Rubin does this, I know, I remember from her podcast. She rereads favorite books over and over. It's like this little comfort zone for mm-hmm. her. Like, And mm-hmm. she really loves children's books. So like, if you have a favorite book, it doesn't have to be something that's going to stretch your mind or you have to sit down and think forever. But just like, this makes me feel happy. I love this book. It has a memory for me that brings me happiness. So pick a favorite book or even a movie. I think that would work too. Listening to upbeat songs. My daughter creates playlists for her different moods. To like oh, help cool. her feel yeah. happier. So if she's like having a down day, she has a playlist you can listen to and those upbeat songs help her. Journaling. We talked about this one too. Keeping a gratitude journal. Another one I wanted to suggest was a one sentence journal where every single day you just literally write one sentence of what happened that day. That'll take you like 15 seconds, you know, not very yeah. long. And then later you can look back and remember what happened that day and, again, have that, like, memory and that positive feeling of of what the day brought you. And then asking for a friend's company was the last tip. I like that was asking for the company because sometimes I think we all think, oh, everyone's fine. They're putting their best face forward. You know, they're all doing great. Mm -hmm. But really just being like, you know, I really need – to hang out right now. And I had my cousin say this recently. She's like, I just want to be around people that I know are positive and like bring me up and I'm mm-hmm. just down. Like we need to get, get together. And so just – I've done that. Yeah. Where I'm just like, I just need to be around positive people, happy people because I can't be down. Like right. we're getting together. Let's have a good time. Yep. Bring everybody up. So was there anything else that stood out on the list to you or something that you would add? I think – I like the exercising one. I know for me, that is definitely something that I've incorporated. Like I have to, I do the walks in the morning, but I have to on Saturdays, I've got my cycle class that I go to and like my, my family knows, like my husband knows, they all know, like mom's going Mm -hmm. to do cycle. We'll see her in a couple hours. And it just, it makes, it just makes my weekend go better. It makes my week go better. I'm knowing that I can go do that. I do it and it's in a class sec- setting. So I get to see other people outside of my family, interact with them, get those endorphins going. And um, yeah, it, it does bring happiness to to my life. And I think even the you mentioned earlier, getting together with friends outside of the work setting. I don't do it every week like mentioned, but me and my friends were like once a month, we have to have girls night, dinner do something mm-hmm. once a month. And so we, we've committed to doing that and it does make a difference. It's something for us to look forward to outside of the regular work day, family life schedule. Yeah, and I think scheduling is so important. I was realizing uh, years ago, like, man, I see these one friends so much more than my other friends. Like, how mm-hmm. can I mm-hmm. see the others more? But I realized the ones I see were because I had a weekly or monthly regular yeah, commitment put it on the like, calendar oh, we're playing basketball every every thursday so i always see these three people mm-hmm. and then that kind of leads to the next thing that we plan together you know yeah it's so like you're already around them and so when you build and schedule it it's it's going to happen and it's going to be a regular boost to your happiness so 
Check out the link in our show notes to this article and learn more about what our happiness experts suggest. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about. And don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was The Perfect Bite.